Hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to my studio. So today we're going to be painting this, this, <laughs> this ocean wave design and I'm going to walk you through every step. So I hope you'll follow along and join me. Welcome back. Um, if you follow along with me, I want to apologize for taking so long to get another tutorial out to you. It's been a few weeks, I think. It's just summertime. I'm a parent, single mom, and it's a busy, busy, busy time. I run summer art programs for kids, and then I've got my own kids home, so I'm running them back and forth between friends' houses and guitar and gymnastics and cross-country camp, and you get it. If you're a parent, you get it. I know you get it. So. Bear with me. I'm going to try to create as many more tutorials as I can before summer's over, but once fall's back in session, hopefully I'll be able to be a little bit more consistent. What else? Anything else? Don't do anything dirty behind my back this time. So as always, we are going to start with our primary colors, blue, magenta, white, and yellow. I'm using a warm yellow. So we want to just get a basic bluish coat over the whole thing. So we'll start with your one inch uh, flat wash brush and get your brush a little bit wet. We're gonna mix just kind of a medium blue color because we don't want it to be the darkest part and we don't want it to be the lightest part. So let's take a scoop of blue, take a little bit of magenta, mix that up and then a little bit of white. So we're just gonna get um, maybe a little more white. We don't want it too light, but we want it to be kind of in between the brightest parts and the darkest. Let's just get a base color on there. If you add a little bit of water to your paint, that'll spread it further. I'm gonna put a little more white in it just to give it a lighter overall look. Just get it covered and then when you have all the paint on there, then you're just gonna do horizontal brush strokes so it's a little more even. Okay, so we got a nice coat of the medium blue on there. I'm gonna use the number eight filbert. And we're gonna make a darker blue color. So I'm gonna take a scoop of blue, a scoop of the magenta, and a little bit of yellow, just a little bit. This is gonna make it a deeper shade. We need more blue, because we want it to be a dark, dark blue color. By putting all three of the primaries, it's gonna help getting it get it nice and dark. If we just added magenta, it would be a little bit on the purple tone. So by adding a little bit of the yellow, that'll just keep it a deep, dark blue. Let's do more blue. Okay, that's a nice dark. You can actually make black out of using all three of the primaries, but it's just lots and lots of, it's the perfect mix of the three, but so by using all three, that's gonna help us get like a deep dark blue shade. So we're just gonna start creating these, they're kind of like a squished oval. So like the shapes as the ripples in the water start appearing, you're gonna see like these 
random shape. So we're just gonna start off kind of creating some of these ovals and it's kind of like a squished oval and then they get a little bit skinnier on the ends like that. <laughs> the best way I can describe it there. So there's kind of like a little raised area where the wave is starting to lap over and then they kind of thin out in the corners, if that makes sense. And then you'll do some other ones where this is coming up, this one will come down. They're gonna look bad at first, we're gonna fix them. These are just the basic shapes we're gonna start with. And we're gonna do bigger, more open wide ones down lower and then they're gonna get smaller and smaller as they get further up so they appear as if they're going back into the distance. Let's just do a few of these shapes here. And now as they get further back, they're gonna be a little more flattened. And you don't want them to be too perfect. Like, it's really hard to explaining water because the water's constantly changing. So they're not gonna be all perfect shapes. So, you know, maybe some of them will kind of blend in together. This shape might just sort of fall into another one. We're just laying down some basic shapes, but you do want them to kind of overlap. Like this one's overlapping this one, this one will overlap this one. Getting flatter as it goes further back. And then pretty soon, they're just gonna be little flat, like little squiggles. And I'm gonna switch to my 5 8 angular brush because this one right here, the one that's got the little angle on it because that little skinny tip will allow us to get nice fine skinny lines like that. So I'm just going to do a whole bunch of little skinny tiny lines as we're up here because those are going to be way far in the distance so you're not going to see all these shapes and details that we have in the foreground. We're gonna do lots of layers, so it's not gonna look this ugly when we're done. <laughs> Paintings usually go through an ugly stage. And this one is already there. We just started. Paintings usually have a, quite a few stages where, it, you know, don't get frustrated because it doesn't always look good for a while. It just takes lots of layers. I was teaching a class in my, I run a kids summer art program and the kids today were all getting so frustrated because there was a lot of layers to the painting we were working on and I kept telling them just keep working it, so you're gonna get there. We were painting a tree trunk and there's lots and lots of layers to make it look like bark. You need lots of different colors and lots of layers and they were all just getting so frustrated saying it's ugly, I hate it, mine doesn't look like yours and, and they finally understood that okay, we've got to work on it for a while before it starts to look like it's actual bark, you know, and it was, it was a challenge for them. 
to accept the fact that it's gonna go through an ugly stage before it gets better. Okay, so that's our basic ugly layout that we have going on so far. So now we're gonna add some lighter shades. So let's take a little bit of white. Let's keep that color. We're just gonna add a little bit of white to the edge of it. I'm gonna put a little water on my brush. We wanna go just a little bit lighter than that dark color. And we're gonna add some of that lighter color right around the edge of this shape here. We'll do this one too. So we want to get the paint a little bit wet. We wanna work with wet paint so it's gonna be easier to blend. So we're just gonna go right along the edges. We'll fill in a little bit of that space in between the darks. Let's take a little more white. And let's go right along the top parts of these, the arch parts. I'm just gonna put a little paint on our brush so it fades out easier. And let's go a little bit around the bottom of this one. Wet paint on wet paint is going to be beneficial to help give it a soft blend. Let's take a little more white. And we're just going to add a little bit of white. There's barely any paint on your brush. The paint's still wet. I'm just going to gradually drag in a little bit of the lighter color. brush a little bit wet. So the paint will be a little more wet. Go around this shape. And pick up these. Get this little section wet. Take a little bit of white. Wipe most of it off. And let's add a little bit of white and blend it in and connect it over here and wrap around there just kind of blend and fade it in Oops. just adding little bits of white into the wet paint right along those edges there Fade it around. Okay, you're gonna work kind of fast so the paint doesn't dry. You want that paint to be wet. See, I'm like curving around and then I'm curving around this way, kind of blending that together. Now, right now it looks very shapey. So let's go back to our number eight filbert brush. And I'm gonna take some of that darker color. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. Take a little bit of that darker color. And I'm gonna bring some of this dark right up along this top ridge here. I'm gonna do it on these as well. If you wanna just focus on one at a time, you can. So they don't dry by the time you get to it. And then, with, I'm gonna wipe off most of the paint off my brush. And I'm gonna drag my brush over where this wet and the wet paint is to kind of blend these, make this more of a soft blend. So it's not such a harsh edge. Do that here too. Go on that medium blue. 
there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth with this water effect that we're gonna do. If your shape changes a little bit, that's okay. Dark, bring that dark back in there. I'm just gonna drag it over. Like that one. Take some of my medium and light. Blend that. And then I want this to be a little, I want it to be darker on the top and a little bit lighter here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that medium blue. I'm just dragging it right into the bottom part of this little ditch here. And I'm fading it up. A little more of that. I'm gonna take some more of that darker color. We might need to mix more. I'm gonna bring the dark to the top of it. Again, this is wet on wet. down into the darker or the lighter. Take one more this lighter. And I'm dragging it back and forth. Long brush strokes back and forth. So it sort of fades from the darkest part into a little bit of a still all pretty dark but I'm just going a little bit lighter on the bottom edge. And I'm dragging it up until more of that darker part in here. Do the same thing over here. And make some more of that dark color. Blue, a little magenta, teeny bit of yellow. Definitely more blue in this mix than the other colors. And you want to make sure your shapes don't look too perfect and you don't want them to have harsh edges. So let's fade that out a little bit white in there. I clean my brush off. Brush clean start. Some that medium blue and blend that out. so shapey so I'm gonna have this shape this dark shape overlap a little more over this one just underneath it and it's just gonna fade out and sort of disappear Wet. 
take a teeny bit of white. And I'm going to bring a little white along this top edge. So like the, the top parts of all these waves, you want to have a little more of a lighter highlight. So it's going to be darker down here, a little lighter here, because the light is hitting the top part of that rolling wave. So a little lighter along the top part. Lighter along the top. Let's get this paint wet around this one. Get, we're gonna get this whole section wet so we can work with this. So I'm taking that medium blue. Just adding some wet paint there. A little bit of white. Add a little white along the top. Okay, so again, adding a little more white to the top part of that ridge. A little more white to the top. And just drag it and drag it and blend it out. So it's a little more faded. And then we need to bring a little darker. Let's take a little more of that dark along right underneath where the light part is, the upper part of this little shape that we have going on here. Let's get a little darker along the top and then have it fade softly into this bottom part here. Now I almost made it disappear completely, so let's add a little more dark along this top edge right under the highlight and then spread it out. Because this is all wet paint here this should blend really nicely. Okay let's do the same thing on this side. Add some darker. And take some of that medium color and blend it up into it. Medium blue, take a little bit of white, and we'll just fade that down, and just long brush strokes back and forth will help it blend really nicely. Just kind of fade that out so it's not such a sh sharp point in that little part there. Just have it fade right into this. brush a little bit wet and let's add some dark along the tops of this shape. And take some medium blue and blend it into the bottom. And let's fade that out. a little bit of white and we'll go right above oh that's really bright take a little medium blue and let's just fade that out a little so it's not so bright white take some of that medium blue and get this area wet wet paint so we can blend everything easier make a little more of that medium blue get that all wet there
So I'm getting it wet right above that highlighted area, the top part of that rolling wave. I'm going to paint some medium blue shade. Let's just get this area wet too, wet paint. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm adding just little bits of white, especially like where the arch is. So it's like the, the sun's hitting the highest point, basically. So put a little more of that white there and then kind of fade out the other parts. Underside there, tiny bit of white, right above there. Medium blue, blend that out. And take some of the dark, dark blue. Let's darken this back up a little bit on the top. Medium blue, fade down the bottom. Dark blue. Hopefully my microphone is not picking up my kids screaming at each other downstairs. Can anybody hear that? <laughs> oh, summer has kicked in. They're getting bored. I tried to escape up to my studio to do some painting, but it's a little distracting when you hear your kids screaming at each other. Anybody relate? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just doing the same exact technique that I did on all the other parts. And once it dries, sometimes you'll see things coming through, like right here, this dried, and that looks really ugly. I want to blend that out a little bit. Add a little water to my brush, a little teeny bit of that medium blue with a little bit of white mixed in. Gonna freshen up that little highlight there. It's easier to blend a color when you have wet paint, in wet paint, on wet paint but you can go back in once it dries. It's just not quite as easy. I just do it by using very thin layers of paint and just softly blending it out until it has a nice even look to it. Okay, so as we get higher and higher, I'm gonna add more and more of the lighter color so it looks like the sun is really hitting those those areas in the distance, so I'm going to get same exact technique, just there'll be more white mixed into the highlights than down below. You can even leave a few shapes, like some medium, this base color that we painted. You can go like that and just sort of leave a little shape showing, create an extra shape. Same, same kind of shape that we did here, but just kind of painting around the base color of the blue that we did and just creating an extra shape there. So this one's not gonna be as detailed as down here because you're not gonna see all those details. So I'm just sort of going in between each of these dark marks with a light to medium blue shade. I'm just sort of Blending in little streaks in between those dark streaks. And I'm just using the tip of the brush. I'm kind of flattening the brush down so 
So then it's got a nice flat edge and you can just use the very tip of the edge to get more skinny streaks and keep them very horizontal with just a slight wave to it. You're going to do lots of these streaks. I'm going to switch to my back to my 5 8 angular brush because I like that skinny flat edge. I can use the tip of it and get some real skinny lines in there. And let's get a lot brighter towards the top. So I'm going to add more white. And along this top section, I'm going to add a lot more of these white highlights. And because it's so watered down, if you paint over some of the little dark marks a little bit, that's okay. You'll still see them showing through if the paint is very watered down. It'll just be more subtle won't be such a big contrast and that's what we want anyway so going right over those dark dark marks is just fine you can leave some of them showing but maybe go over about half of them and if you have your paint watered down enough you're still gonna see those popping through so then you know you are at a good watered down level. You have the right amount of water mixed in if you can still see those dark marks showing through a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take some more of that very watered down light color and we're just going to go around some of these along the tops of some of these arches again. It looks really bright right now, but because it's watered down, when it dries it will fade a little bit. So we want it to just, we want this just to be a gradual layering effect. So I'm going to go around some of these shapes with this light color and then I'm going to just fade it out. Go around and just sort of blend it in between the two shapes, sort of blend that out. And my paint is so watered down that I can blend it pretty easily. Just very light brush strokes will help you blend. Barely touch the canvas, just feathering that brush will help fade it out. Sometimes using a finger to blend a little helps too. Just do little bits at a time, then it won't get as overwhelming. Let's do little bits here, right along the tops, those dark spots.
So let's mix a little bit. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this dark, dark, dark blue. So we'll do the blue again, a little bit of magenta, and a little bit of yellow. Mix that up, see what we get. That's nice dark blue, so I wipe off most of that paint. I clean my brush off. And you'll find like these little squiggly highlights, they're reflections of whatever's nearby in the water. I'm gonna use my little tiny um, number two round brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of that dark, dark, dark on my brush. And I'm gonna go where the highlights or the white parts of the highlights are. We're just gonna do some little shapes. And these will be a little tiny shapes. If you look at pictures of water, just zoom in on the shape and create the same kind of look. Now these are gonna be really dark. And let's do another one over here. And then we'll do another one maybe over here. They're not always the exact same shape, but sometimes they kind of branch off. Sometimes they'll have like a little squiggle to them. Like kind of like a zigzaggy look. So I'm creating this design from a few different photos. So <laughs> I have a bunch of different photos that I'm working with. So I'm kind of stealing some parts from one photo, some parts from another. I'm kind of creating my own scene here. Let's do another one over here. Okay, we'll start with that. And then, actually, let's do one more. Let's do one more long one over here. We're gonna do a little bit of white around the edge. So get your brush wet so it's thinned out. We want this very thinned out. And we're gonna do a little white right around the edge. There's like a little glow around these little shapes. So by having it 
a little water down. It's not going to be such a harsh outline. If there's enough water in it, when it dries, it'll kind of fade out around the edges. And that's what we want. So you can already see it starting to dry. It's just kind of dissipating and not staying so bright, bright white. We're gonna do that around each of these shapes. You can always go back in and brighten it afterwards, which we will do in some areas. But for starters, we just want it to be a faint, faded white glow around it. We can just kind of connect these two with that white outline. Just connect this, keep it watery. Connect this to this one. Then we're going to go around with a little less water, still with some watered down white, but a little bit less water. We're just going to touch on a few points and make it a little brighter white. So just kind of here and there on each one, little bits here and there, we'll just brighten up that white a touch. And there's not really any exact science to this, I'm just kind of picking a few areas here and there to bring out a little bit of that white. Keep it kind of thin though. Now you can go in and just brighten a few areas with a little more white here and there. I'm going to take this brush and fade it out a little. Then we're going to do a little more reflection inside the reflection. So let's take a little bit of that lighter white color and we're just going to do a little squiggly line inside the reflection. Just little bits here and there. I'm barely tapping my brush down, so I'm getting a very skinny, skinny line. And let's take another color. I'm going to take some magenta and a little bit of yellow. And a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit. Just to make a completely different shade. 
do kind of a brownish color. And I'm just gonna tap in little bits into some of these reflections. So like maybe there's a boat next to it that's reflecting in the water, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm not going from one photo, kind of just making up what I want. <laughs> just add a little bit of white to some of that. So we get another shade, maybe a little yellow. This could be any color, it doesn't have to be this exact color. I just want to see another color right in the middle of this reflection. So you have a couple colors going on in there. You don't have to do it on all of them, just a few. And I'm going to bring a little more white up into this area. So I'm watering down my white a little bit. And now I'm just going to add little bits of little white reflections and doing kind of some zigzags in and around between these darker shades here. This is going to have less water in it than it did that first round, so it stays a little bit brighter white. But more of this bright white towards the top. And you'll do less and less as it gets lower. So this is kind of sun drenched up here and it will fade back into the distance a little more. Put a little more water, maybe add a little bit of that blue. So it's a light, light blue, not so white as we're getting down here. Doing the same technique, just adding some squiggly highlights, zigging, it, zigging in and out of those darker shapes in the water. Keeping the lighter reflections up higher. Now I'm doing just some fine, really fine lines, some squiggles in the water. Keeping it in these lighter areas where the water's a little more flat. This part is like where the wave is dipping down, so we don't want these little Highlights and reflections to be on that part. It'd be on the flatter part. Add a little more of this white highlight right around these shapes here. And again, it's pretty watered down, so it'll just kind of fade out around these. This brush is too big for that. So 
switch to my my uh, number eight filbert. Watered down white, just adding a little more. Take my two inch round, or two, number two round. <laughs> That's not two inches. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white and I'm gonna add just a few little reflections, little details right in the middle of some of these reflections. Just little bits here and there. Just to brighten those up a little bit. And these need to be teeny tiny little lines so they fit in the middle of those darker shapes there. And again, I'm going to go back in a little more white. And I'm just going to brighten up a few of these edges of these little highlights. A little bit of bright white, just along the edge. Very fine little line. Not, I'm not outlining the whole thing. Just a few little bits here and there. I'm just going to brighten up a few areas with some really bright white. You don't want to do too much because you want these bright white spots to be kind of special so they stand out a little more. just create a little bit of a highlight as if there's something really bright shining down. So let's have some white highlights kind of come down all the way here. But we're just going to hit little bits here and there like where the wave comes up. Let's add a little bit of a bright right here. Maybe like right there. Maybe a little right here. Still a little there on the, the raised part of that wave. Maybe a little bit along the bottom edge there. Still a little right here too. Do a little here. Here. 
and I don't have this really watered down. This is pretty thick paint now, so it shows up nice and bright white. Just get a little next to that too. I'll create an interesting shape in the water. Give it like a little zigzag. Now if it's looking a little too rough and you can see the texture of the canvas, just add a tiny bit of water, sort of blend it out. I'm just flicking my brush, kind of fade that out a little bit. It looks like there's some reflection kind of coming down from here. Let's add a little bit more up here. Get a little less water so it's nice and bright white just up here. Gonna fade some of these little parts out a little bit because the texture of the canvas is making them look a little too rough. Let's fade out the edges with a damp brush. Use your teeny brush, your number two round brush. Put a little bit of water or a little bit of white. It's kind of a damp brush, so it's not bright, bright white, it's a little bit watered down. And I'm gonna do some little dabs. These are gonna be little sparkles in the water. So I'm just gonna do little dots here and there, not too many, just a few little sparkles. They're gonna be a little faded when they dry. Keep them on all the parts, the lighter areas, where the water or where the light would be hitting. Don't do any in the dark parts, because the light's not seeing that. The lights, the flat parts, the lighter parts are where the light is shining down. So I'm gonna do just a few more of these little sparkles in the water. And then you can put a little more paint on your brush so it's a little bit brighter white, and just do little teeny tiny dots. They should be smaller as they get higher up here. And you don't want them to be, to be perfectly spaced out. They'd be a little scattered. You might see a couple next to each other here, maybe one here, maybe there's two over here. And don't go too crazy. Take a very thinned out white. I'm just gonna do a little X over the tops. And it's a very faded out white. You could do like a, a crisscross and a plus. So like an X 
with a line going through it. And they don't all have to be that shape. Some of them can just be like a an X or just a plus. Some can have an X and a plus. You're just sort of giving it that burst, that little sparkle. But you want this to be very faint and faded, so water it down so it doesn't come out bright, bright white. And the little burst can be bigger down as it gets lower. So it looks like these are closer in the foreground. It's just a very, very faded watered down white. I'm just barely touching the canvas with my brush. It's very subtle. When it dries, it'll fade back even more. You can decide if you want it brighter or not. I always like to water things down, so I'm not quite sure if I like it. Once it dries, it'll be really subtle. And then if I like it, when it was going on the first time, if it was standing out a little bit more and I like that look, I can always add a little more paint to it make it stand out more, if that makes sense. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you next time. Can you just look at it?